Uh, the next step is going to be the subdivision of the pulse. So now we're going to take it into eighth notes. Um, I think this might be even more difficult uh, because you're playing that left hand alone much of the time and together much of the time and they're all mixed in. So don't think of this so much as trying to play all these notes at the right time. What we're trying to do is feel for the rhythm and be able to to get a sense of the pulse, making up a left hand, being able to, to add a subdivision into that. Let's start with the chop section. And here we have just practicing your chords again. Moving to D, to F, G, and then to A. Okay, you can practice that. It's really easy. It's just getting ready to play. Move over into this part where you get to do that with the whole One, song. Two, just the seven, left hand alone, go. which isn't too bad. Now remember, we're gonna move quickly to the F chord and back to the C chord. Hopefully you've done all the previous steps so this is much easier with jumping to your new chords. down to C, up to G. Think what's the next chord. It's a G, think what's the next chord. Don't watch the notes, go look at the next part and just do it by feel. Next chord is F, you think with F chord. Look at that G chord and back to C chord. So the further you can think ahead, the easier it is. And think of them in units, not notes. This is one note. You're just a drummer. C chord. A chord. You can just practice jumping around. I like just practicing moving. Look at your hand even. And you can mix up the chords into a different variety of practicing because you need to be able to think of that very quickly so that when we get to adding it to the right hand, it's actually easier for you because you have paid the price to get that into your fingers. You don't have to think so much. You have to make it automatic or putting it together becomes very, very difficult. All right, here we go. First section. I think I started with the wrong finger. Let me get the right finger so that I build the rhythm into my fingers and the, the notes and the patterns so that my hand can actually learn it instead of just my brain learning it. So I'm gonna get in the habit of using the same fingers every time. Thumb. Now, the hard part, I'm going to move to the F chord. Move to the C chord and play the G together. Practice that as slow as you need, as many times as you need, until we get it together. Whoops, I started with my wrong finger. F chord. Barely in time. Next session. Now I have the A chord here. I move to my D chord. Now notice, you'll start to notice where the strong beat lies. It's actually in your pinky. Strong beat, one, two, three, four. I'll change positions to the G chord, strong beat it on the pinky again. Very 
Very good. First thing to concentrate on is just the rhythm and getting your, your hands coordinated to be able to play the right notes on the right time at the right time. Let's put both of those sections together. Move to F and back to C. And this one you get a pause on second. <gasps> Take a breath and go to A chord. So notice I didn't do it quite fast enough. So you wanna start thinking faster and faster, moving those chords ahead of time. Um, I'll give you an example of here's where my brain thinks of those changes. I think of this as one unit. You can see this left hand all in one chord and I'm just playing a beat. So I don't have to keep thinking while I'm playing this stuff. I just think C chord, start it. And so while my hands are playing this, my brain thinks what's coming up. Here we go. C chord starting. Now I'm looking at the next chord already, which is also a C chord. The next one I move to F, thinking and getting ready mentally. Mentally, I've already thought I needed to move to C. I'm already thinking the A chord is next. Thinking the D chord is next, and I'm preparing mentally long in advance to move there. And I have to finish on G. And there it is, but I've already thought about moving to G. Now you can't do that if you're thinking too hard about the rhythms and everything. So, again, you have to just get this into your muscle memory so it takes over without you having to think too much. And the only way to do that is just repetition. Do it over and over correctly until it finally takes over without you thinking. How many times? Well, that depends on each person. And you can play it as fast as you want till you get 100%, and then move on to the next section, which is our C chord. Two finger on E, four finger on G. I'm going to be moving to my G position, staying on G and coming back. So there's only one moving back in the left hand. The right hand, I have one change as well. G chord, stay on the G chord. Switch back to C. Let's move on to the next section when you get 100. Move to the F position. This is nice to pause a little bit and think to the G chord. Not quite fast enough, so get it done faster. F to G and C and then you get to add the last half of the song together from lead me guide me to G stays on G back to C I mess that up, I'm just going to start over. C chord, G chord. Another G chord, and C. And then the C, move up to F, and G, and C. We get to do the whole song together now. 
too. In rhythm. That's it. By the way, if you want to practice the prepare mode or the assess mode, the prepare mode is simply, it will follow you and let you have some time to practice, but it won't give you your final score. So after you practice it, I usually like to start with prepare and then end up on assess. One, two, set, go. C chord first. Another C chord. Now I'm moving to F. And back to C. Quickly to A chord. D chord. Then up to G. C chord. G chord. C chord, up to F, to G, and finish on C. Excellent. That is a really hard one. <laughs>